Now the place to start this, this new series of videos, is near the end, where David is attaching a window which he has taken apart, attaching all the original pieces plus the repaints to an easel of, what is it, toughened glass? Or? It is toughened glass. So it is all stuck down here, and there is a mixture here before people of 19th century glass plus 20th century glass plus your repaints. Is that right? That's right. Why, why put things down on the easel first, like this? Well, we've produced a lead line. On the easel? On the, e on the glass easel which enables us to, to stand the glass vertically against the light, as you see what, that what we're doing, um, so as that we can make an assessment of the painterly quality of the, of the, of the work that we've done. OK. And, see, and also see the quality of the colour against the natural light, as opposed to the light box. That's another thing, isn't it? So here, what have we got? We've got the bottom of a window... And the top part, which we can't quite see in this, there, there is a shield. But here we've got two dogs and the inscription, which says Shrewsbury? Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury okay. or Shrewsbury. And then two dogs who are holding the coat of arms, the, the shield up above. And these dogs are what? The, well, they're known as the supporters and they are Talbots. Talbots. And Talbots, they're now extinct. Uh -huh. So they've become heraldic dogs. They are heraldic emblems for... Hunting dogs. Hunting dogs, okay. Yeah. So it is the heads in particular that we're going to be looking at in this series of videos, and in particular, the head on the left. Now, both of these heads, they're quite funny. The original heads don't survive, do they? And what you've got, in fact, which I know we're going to see in a moment, what we've got here is the stripped window. So now we've gone back in time. So here's the window. We brought it to the studio, all loaded up. Here's the stripped window. And here is a later repaint, which has been painted on the back. Led it up, unpainted, and then later on painted on the back with water and gum Arabic. And because it was leaded up, it hasn't been fired. Now, let's have a closer look at one of these heads. And here it is. So this is the glass, and you weren't content when you stripped down the window, you weren't content to leave this head in place. Why is that, David? Tell me, what made you take it out and well, say, I'm going to repaint it? <laughs> what is wrong with this Talbot? Tell I, me. I, th I, I think, for most of us, I think it's, it's self-evident, but I will say it. Um, I think it is, it's insensitive. It's, it is... Don't mince your words. It is... <laughs> it is <laughs> It is cartoon-like. Um, so if we said it's, 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 it would act, to s describe it as a Walt Disney dog would actually be quite rude to Walt Disney, it I, would, I feel. It would. He, he, they, they, those cartoonists really can draw. What's worse, the, uh, the lack of volume in the hair or the, the, uh, the miserable expression on the dog's face, its teeth? It's, or do you like the eye in particular? What do you it's like? hard what? to choose, hard isn't to choose, it? It's isn't hard it? to choose. It, for me... It's the stumpy teeth. Stumpy teeth. It's <laughs> just what's happened? A, a dental extraction? <laughs> well, they're not. Te they're gnashers. They're gnashers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what your your proposal? So your proposal was that we couldn't we couldn't restore this window and live with that that painting there. And here, in fact, is the dog halfway through restoration because there will be something that we all do. We will be doing afterwards. But this is the this is the dog's head that you will be painting in front of us now over the series, this series of videos. And it is a big improvement on the original. Here, we are going back in time, back in time through the layers of paint that David will be putting on, back to the trace, back to the undercoat, and now back to bare glass. So you have seen where we will be going to with looking at the window, with the repaints, against natural light in order to decide whether or not those repaints and repairs are good enough to be re-leaded, whether or not they all blend together. That's where we're going to. And now we're back at the start with a piece of glass that David has recut. And you feel like this, this piece of glass, it, it's, it's a more appropriate color than the one which you found in the window from we think it, it was a piece of window, put, piece of glass put in in the 20th century, don't we? 
I'm fairly I'm fairly sure because the it, it's a colour that it, it's just slightly it's just slight the original glass was just slightly blue, um, and the glass we've chosen has a just slightly green grey tint, oh. and it and it 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 matches more closely to those pieces which survive from the 19th century. Okay. Okay, so there are in fact 18 windows which we're restoring and there are other other sections of this window where there is a green, a light tint of green which is like this. Yes. Yeah, so the whole thing will hang together far better and right. And because this is the centre window of this enormous scheme of heraldic windows, both you and I felt it was just so important to get, because that's the centre the, where the eye really looks, we both felt it was really important to get the dogs right, everything about, because it's the donor's window effectively, isn't it? So... It was really important, in particular, to, uh, not even forgetting the awful, awful painting of those dogs to get the colour right so that what we people were looking at first and foremost was something splendid and fitting. Well, it is, it is curious that the, the, the centre light, which this is, mm. um, of all the windows in this scheme, this, had, this was one that had suffered the most historic damage. Yeah. In, in terms of not just the weather, but in, in terms of also the stupidity of the repairs that had been done to it, perhaps. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you have now cleaned the glass using glass paint. It's quite rare you use washing up liquid or anything like that, isn't it? It's better to stick with glass paint. I've never used... Um, degreasers or detergents or I've always used glass yeah paint. sometimes sometimes some, when the glass sheet comes with a sticker on it sometimes see, one does get a bit desperate and scour it off or something but generally glass paint should be able to well or, uh, or a scouring pad or something the, I, th I think Keep I, with natural stuff I, th I think the point is if it's cleaned with glass paint and the glass paint will adhere without it resisting then it's done its job. Yeah, you've proved what, it. Yeah, you've proved it. Yes, proved exactly. It. It's, the, it's, yes. The, it's the one proof you need. Yeah. So there you've tested your your undercoat to make sure the, t the, the darkness is right. You've tested it on that piece of glass on your right, and now you're doing the undercoat. Can you do it? Looks like you're struggling with grease there, David. So the cleaning, okay, this happens, doesn't it? Sometimes you clean a piece of glass once, twice, three times, and still you need to clean it again. And there's no point in pushing on, is there? No. Absolutely not. Um, I mean, I'm just laughing because I, I was going to, I was going to say that it needs to be really vigorously cleaned, yeah. oh. which it does, and I'm knocking pieces all over yeah. the place there. So if it, yes, if it needs, you know, cleaning several times, then do it several times. Yeah. Sometimes if there's just one piece of grease around the edge, you can push on with the, with the hake brush. And if your fingers are clean, you can actually go and rub the glass and rub some paint in it and make it clean. Anyway, here we go with the second time round. Good luck. But certainly the, the hake brush I'm using, there we are, look. It, um, it's pretty ancient, is it? And another thing I'm just noticing here, you are putting down the undercoat, and I want to, I want to draw people's attention to this. You are putting down the undercoat fairly unevenly. And look, you're just putting down some extra paint around the side. Now, sometimes you want an even undercoat, but here you're not aiming to do one. So why is that? Why, why are you happy with a rough undercoat? In working on these windows, we've looked at original glass from the 19th century. And over time, the paint has failed from the inside from the inside out, ah, so to speak. So, so it's weaker so, on the inside than it is on the outside. Particularly on large yeah. pieces of glass. Yeah. So where it's been more exposed to, to weathering or whatever, or, or the, or the, uh, the condensation or whatever it is. Yeah. So we are, we are going to distress this glass to look like those original pieces. Okay, so it's going to be darker on the outside, lighter on the inside, plus you will have some shading for when you come to trace on it. Now that glass is still wet, 
still a little bit damp, you can see it there. You're placing it on the cartoon. You are now, you're not blending the undercoat anymore. What you're doing is helping it to dry, aren't you? With the... I'm, I'm using the Badger Blender yeah. as, a, as a fan, yeah. actually. And then here's, this, this is what's happened so far. The, the tint of glass and then the undercoat, and you can clearly see the dark around the edges. And coming up next, in the next video in the series, we'll be seeing you trace the Talbot Hound, which will take you from here, with that darkness around the edges, to here. And that will all be next time. See you then.